ITV. Come on in. Whether you're a Grand Slam champion or an armchair umpire, tennis is a game enjoyed around the world. So much so that an estimated 300 million tennis balls are made each year. Despite the game's popularity, there's only one manufacturer of tennis balls in the UK, Price of Bath, based in Bath. This family firm have been making rubber balls for tennis, squash and racquetball for over 80 years. I've been here 37 years, so um, I'm hoping to be here for another 20 odd years, but <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Rather than compete with mass producers in Asia and the Far East, the company specialise in custom design balls. It's led by third generation ball maker Louise Price. We make about 300,000 tennis balls a year at the moment, um, but we've got the capacity to scale up or down, so um, we just, it's supply and demand really. Today, the team are making a batch of custom tennis balls for a corporate client. The first job is to mix the raw ingredients, the biggest of which is rubber. So this is a bale of rubber, um, natural rubber. This is how it comes into us from um, our suppliers. Um, rubber, the natural rubber, um, come from rubber plantations where it drips out of the trees. Rubber is what gives tennis balls their bounce. Ours at the moment comes from Malaysia, but you can purchase from Vietnam and other countries that have plantations. It's been harvested in the same way for thousands of years. It's a bit like elastic bands, it's really stretchy. If I was to drop it from a high height, it would bounce uncontrollably. Um, but we can't use it like this. We need to be able to get it into a state to be able to mix into, so it has to be masticated on the mill. Mastication squashes and stretches the natural rubber, breaking the chemical chains making it soft and pliable and turning it darker in colour. Which turns it into this. Again, still rubbery, very bouncy, but um, uh, a nice, even surface to be able to mix with. The mastication and the mixing happens in this 60-year-old machine, affectionately known as the Beast. This is a massive machine, uh, two big rollers that turn, and uh, it looks old-fashioned, but they still use them today. Ours is an open mill. Um, so it means that you can put anything in from it, um, from the top and mix in. Before it can be moulded into shape, up to a dozen other ingredients need to be added. Each ball has um, a different formulation. Those formulations consist of rubber, um, some accelerators, which are the things that make the rubber cook, and um, a number of other things to help determine the weight and the bounce and structure of the ball. Competition tennis balls must be a certain size and weight. Crucially, the air-filled balls should offer just the right amount of bounce. Between 135 and 147 centimetres, when dropped from a height of 254 centimetres, at sea level, at 20 degrees Celsius. All very technical. Thankfully, Louise has a team of professionals. So this is where all those ingredients are in smaller quantities. Um, easy for Andy to access. Uh, it's where he weighs out the mixes um, to get the right uh, measurements for each mix. And e each mix is different, you know, whether you're making a regular tennis ball or a children's tennis ball, whether you're making a racket ball or a squash ball. Back on the beast, chemical additives are being mixed with the masticated rubber. A chemical accelerator is added like baking powder for the rubber, that helps it cook once it's formed into the correct shapes. Chemicals like stearic acid and magnesium carbonate are also added to perfect the weight and bounce of the finished balls. It's quite a lengthy process because it has to be mixed very well to get a consistent ball, consistent performance. As it's rolled, the mix is gently warm. It's pretty hard work, it's physical work, and um, it's fine-tuned because um, if he keeps it on the mill too long, it gets too hot. Um, at that point, the rubber can start cooking. When it's finished, Andy sheets it off at a certain thickness when everything's blended in and consistent all the way through. Once it's mixed, it has to come off quickly, getting to the racks ready to go on to the next stage. The next job is to divide the mixture into portions, called pellets, ready for moulding. 
The mix is between 50 and 60 degrees when it comes off the mill. As it cools, it becomes harder to work with, so time is of the essence. It gets fed into this machine in a sausage, uh, uh, pushed through with pressure through the hole, and the knife chops it off to the required size of weight. That's all, all set with these measurements. It's a really quick process, comes into the travelator, onto here, um, and that solution's got anti-stick, anti-tack to stop the rubber all sticking together. Uh, at the moment, the rubber is still warm, so you can, you can chop it up, um, but the minute it hits the water um, into the anti-tack, it starts to cool. If you touch the nuggets now, they're still warm to touch, but within a few minutes, they, they've cooled right off. From here, we take those pellets to be moulded into half shells. Each 25-gram pellet contains just the right amount of material to make one half of a ball. The pellets are loaded into a press before being squeezed into shape. So this is one half of a tennis ball. Um, Callum behind me is uh, loading out all of them into the press and it cooks on a two and a half minute cycle um, under pressure. Um, it's equivalent of having several lorries on top of you to push the rubber into the right place of the mould, uh, about 200 tonne. And after two and a half minutes, the shells will come out and that's half your ball made. The cooked half balls come out of the oven moulded into a tray of 36. Tyrone's about to punch sheets of tennis balls out into the half shell. So um, then we'll have no flash left and those two halves can be put together to make a ball. This machine is really noisy um, and it's the punch. So um, they load shells into um, a knife, goes underneath and the, and the tonnage just drops on top to punch the shell through. And from here they go on to the next stage where they get joined. We load a tray um, uh, with glue, joining solution, um, which is then loaded with half shells of balls. And once they're in position, uh, they're dipped, so they take a little layer of glue on the rim, uh, and then you'll see Kerry moves them off with air, ready to dry, um, so they're tacky, ready to put two halves together. Kerry uses a vacuum pump to position a tray of glued halves under their other halves, before storing them in racks ready to be permanently sealed together. It's been here a long time, so I'm trying to guess how 25 years, is it? 24. 24 years. All the members of staff are, they're like pieces of the jigsaw, and although they're all very good and can do each other's jobs, their knowledge is, um, is you know, tremendous. Having a member of staff that you can rely on is, is key to everything, really. To withstand serves that regularly exceed 100 miles an hour, the glue needs to cure, fusing the two halves together. At the moment, you can pull the tennis balls apart, but once it's been through this machine, um, it's a solid joint, nice and strong. Chris populates all the um, areas and then uh, twists the ball so it's loaded in a particular way to make sure we get pressure put around the joint. The balls are heated to 150 degrees for 20 minutes. The pressure of the clamp fuses the two halves of the balls together. We're a steam-powered factory. All the machinery is heated up by steam and cooled down by water. And this is an example of one of those machines behind us. I enjoy hearing the hissing of the, um, the valves going and the occasional leaks. So it gives you a real feeling of uh, nostalgia. After cooking, the balls are dropped into a vat of glue, which will eventually help the felt cover stick to the rubber surface. Now the balls are solutioned, um, they're ready to go to the coverers, so we need to go get the cloth sorted, um, and then these get delivered. The cloth is a blend of wool and nylon. It's cut from rolls into figure of eight shapes, two to cover each ball. The cloth has been cut from its rolls and um, Andy is now punching out the figure of eights. He's using a fly press to manually punch out four strips of cloth at the same time. The most popular colour, called optic yellow, was developed in 1972 to help TV viewers more easily spot the ball. Up until then, tennis balls were either white or black. 
In an hour, he can punch 18 blocks, which is 648 balls. From here, that, this goes into the machine, uh, gets dipped into uh, a rubber solution that allows the two halves of the balls to be stuck together. And that job falls to ever-present Andy, one of the firm's longest-serving members of staff. I'm just going to dip the clock now. When I first started, um, I was up in uh, doing squash balls. Then I went down on tennis. Um, I've done mostly everything in the, in the factory. I get here at half past five. I start the boiler up in the morning. Um, then I go on the mill and start mixing straight away. I've never played tennis, to be honest with you. No. I've just made the balls. <laughs> and very nice balls they are but they still need covering with that distinctive yellow cloth. To help meet demand, the firm uses flexible teams of home workers who, unsurprisingly, work from home. This part of the process is done at home by our home workers. Uh, they have a bag of balls delivered and um, blocks of cloth. So they start off by stripping the cloth into pieces. This cloth has got um, the solution around the outside and then to cover a tennis ball it's all about the positioning it's a job louise has grown up doing and she's not afraid of getting stuck in i do this if we've got a late order or desperate for a ball but generally it's just to train whoever's going to be doing it at home we've got between 10 and 20 home workers it varies according to what season it is what time of year how many balls we're making that particular month and um, uh, they get two deliveries a week um, so there's always a constant supply the final stage is to seal the two pieces of cloth together in the finished mold This cycle runs for 20 minutes. Uh, the moulds are heated up to 141 degrees. Um, in that time, the solution around the ball melts um, and then Kerry unloads them. After that, they'll be ready to be inspected and then off they go to be packed. Ready to be shipped off to court. Game, set and match. 